And we come to the final award of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, the Lifetime Achievement Award. To present the very special award, please welcome once again our chief guest, the Right Honourable James Cleverly MP, along with Lord Garan Bilamoria, CBE, UKBCCI President Mr. Bajalur Rashid, MBE, and Chairman Mr. Iqbal Ahmed, OBE, and one more person, the Senior Vice President Mr. M.A. Ralph J.P. Ladies and gentlemen, to say that this recipient has achieved much in his lifetime would be the most comic of understatements. A visionary, a lifelong and driven entrepreneur, he has earned international recognition and respect for his leadership and professional qualities. A very well-known philanthropist. Let's look at his achievements. Lifetime Achievement Award Saeed Manzoor Elahi Saeed Manzoor Elahi is an eminent industrialist who is the founding chairman of Mutual Trust Bank Limited and Pioneer Insurance Company Limited. Mr Elahi is the chairman of Apex Group, a leading business conglomerate in Bangladesh. He has won Business Executive of the Year 2000 from the American Chamber of Commerce, Bangladesh and Business Person of the Year 2002 Award sponsored by the Daily Star and DHL Worldwide Express. He was also appointed advisor to the caretaker government of Bangladesh in 1996 and again in 2001. He has served as chairman of the Bangladesh Association of Banks, chairman of Central Depository Bangladesh Limited, vice chairman of the Bangladesh Association of Publicly Listed Companies, director on the boards of Bangladesh Bank, Sonali Bank and Bangladesh Krishi Bank director of the Export Promotion Bureau, president of the Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and president Bangladesh Employers Association. He has earned international recognition and respect for his leadership and professional qualities. He is also a well-known philanthropist. The UK BCCI Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Mr. Saeed Manzoor Elah. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank UK BCCI for this singular honor. You may have seen some of the brief things that I've done in my life. All I can say is that probably due to time constraint, it would be very difficult for me to say everything about my lifetime in a few minutes. It's just not possible. I ventured into the business world on my 30th birthday, 26 September 1972, after a seven-year tenure in British American Tobacco. That was my first and last job. And as some of the speakers have said, that every person must have a dream. So I also dreamt. I dreamt to be an entrepreneur. I come from a family of lawyers. You may be interested to know that my grandson from my brother's side is the fifth generation barrister. And because of this family background, uh, they did not look up to business world. They thought all businessmen were crooks, they were smugglers, they evade taxes. They were not liked, at least in my family. When I refused to be a lawyer, they said, OK, you join the civil service. So I was preparing for the civil service which we used to, the Pakistan time, it was called Civil Service of Pakistan, which was the elite civil service job. 
and most of my very good friends had joined the civil service and the foreign service. But I always nurtured, as I said, a dream. I didn't want to be a service, in service. And secretly, against the wishes of my parents and my brothers, I read everything on GRD Tata. Tata was my role model. I wanted to be, I wanted to follow into the footsteps of Tata. Why? Because he strongly believes in corporate management. He strongly believes in professional management. He's honest, idealist, and a simple man. He has contributed to the, to the communities in India, which very few people of you know. I, th I don't think you people know. He built the Academy of Sciences in as early as 1938-39, which still produces the top scientists of India in Bangalore. Tata Cancer Institute, Tata Institute of Management, you name it, he's there. But that's a, that's, that's a dream that you cannot achieve. So when I resigned in 1972, as I said, Bangladesh economy was nothing there. There was nothing there. The Pakistan army, when they retreated, it's true they did not follow a scorched earth policy in that they burnt the crops, they did not. But the farmers had fled across the border. So in 1972, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be shocked to know our foreign exchange, we started with the foreign exchange, I still remember, of $686. That is what we started. Because the central bank was in Karachi, and Bangladesh Bank, the, the bank that you see was State Bank of Pakistan. The Pakistanis knew that they had to leave, so they took everything. And we were left in loose changes in various drawers of $686. It's true that United Nations Relief Organization of Bangladesh, UNROB, gave us an immediate grant of $2 billion, those days a lot of money, and that helped us. And that's why even Henry Kissinger believed that we were a bottomless basket. Of course, later on he denied. He said, no, no, I didn't say it. It's somebody in the State Department officials said it. Whatever it is, there was no business opportunities. We didn't have money to buy import milk powder, baby food. This is Bangladesh that we started with. Many of you were not born at that time, or many of you may have been very young. But we've seen those days. But as the Chinese say, that for every problem, there's an opportunity. And I saw a great opportunity. I ventured into the leather business, and to my utter dismay, I found that Chittagong port was closed. The ships couldn't come in. How do I export my goods? Why? Because the Indian Air Force had bombed the ships berthed in Chittagong Airport, at uh, Chittagong Seaport, so that Pakistan, Pakistani troops from West Pakistan could not come to East Pakistan, the then East Pakistan. So I had a French principal who chartered a plane, and we, used to, we started our export business in leather to France by cargo plane. We used to fill up the cargo plane with chemicals and bring it and sell it. But sell it and then we didn't know what to do because the banking system wasn't there. How do we open letters of credit? How do we pay the French chemical supplies with dollars? So, as I said, I'm 78 years old. If I keep on talking about all this, it will take the whole night. It's just not possible. Fast forward, 
and we built a tannery, which I'm proud to say is probably one of the biggest in South Asia, if not the biggest. We built a shoe factory, a port linkage, which is also, I think, the biggest shoe factory in South Asia. We are much bigger than many fact all the factories in India. And this took a lot of sacrifice. My family suffered. I did not see my children grow up. I was on the road most, most of the time in Italy. Italy became my second home because in my leather, in my profession, Italy is the leader. Nobody can beat Italy in design of leather goods and shoes in those days. Now it's a different story. And I wish my wife was here because without her support, I was, as I said, I was never there 20 days of the month. The boy, my boy and my girl, they were growing up without father. I'm proud to say that my son is here and he's looking after the business for the last, I do not know, Nasim, how many years? I think he came back from States in 1990 at the age of 22, and since then he's been in the business. So he's put in a lot of years. And what is important that I've learned is that what my family taught me, the values. My family drilled it into my mind that people will respect you not for your money, not for how many cars you have, not how many branded suits you wear or branded watches you wear. People will respect you for your honesty, for your behavior, and simple way of life. You must behave with people with humility. This is what our Prophet Rasulullah has said all his life. So you can, even in Bangladesh, whereas you know our Prime Minister is driving against corruption in a big way, corruption has become a way of life. To remain honest in that world is very difficult, but you can. So my appeal to young entrepreneurs, I've seen a lot today, that whatever you do, pay your taxes, be honest, be a good citizen, be a good human being. Because as I said, in, in Islam we say that coffin, the, the, the shout that you have, coffin it, pocket hoina, there's no pocket in the, the shout that you have that you're buried with. So you can't take your wealth. So you can do it. It's difficult, very difficult, but then that is what is life. If difficulties and opportunities come, and people will honor you, the society will honor you. So all the young, I'm very, I'm very, I mean, surprised, pleasantly surprised, and proud that I see so many Bangladeshi entrepreneurs, Bangladesh origin British entrepreneurs. This is very, very gratifying. And before I end, I have to say one thing which I've never had the platform to acknowledge. Thank you, British people, for helping us in 1971. I was a refugee here in the whole of 1971 because of my political problems with the Pakistan Army. We were on the wanted list. So I was one of the fortunate few to escape with my family as a refugee to England. And I saw the typical British philosophy, feeling for the underdog. We were the underdogs. Pakistan was the strength, the strong man. And we were the underdogs. 
and the British press at that time always, always supported us. Thank you, British people. Thank you, UK. Thank you, Mr. Iqbal Ahmed. Thank you, Mr. Bazlu Rashi. Thank you for everything. Thank you for this honor. Khuda Hafiz. So truly outstanding there, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to Mr. Ilahi. And we are delighted, privileged, and honored that he is with us today.